Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, to It Moves. This is chapter four. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go, but uh, I, I, I hope this is cool. I, I don't know. This feels very climactic. Like we're going to fucking take down the monster or something. I don't know. A hook hangs from the wall. A piece of meat hangs to dry from it. Earthquake? the giant demon spider. What? Something's going wrong. It's like... Okay, it's glitched out. I'm not in control of the dude. Okay, I tap once and he does like three feet of movement. Alright, hold on. I'm gonna actually... Let my computer take a break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to what I expect to possibly be the last episode of It Moves. There might be more, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, I had to give my computer some time to rest because I noticed there were some issues with how well it was running, and I didn't know if that was an overheating problem or what, but we're going to continue this game. That said, let's begin. Oh boy. It is not running well. It is super latent. Okay. It's like a puzzle game within a puzzle game that I saw. It's not so bad here. Another one. Okay. It's a big pool, but I'd rather not use it. Those spiders were ants. I think those are ants. Looks like a map. Pressure depicts a couple of men standing in front of a car. I can't talk about this. Oh, those are... Oh god, those are cats. <laughs> it's got a mustache. Also, these are otherwise terrifying. Trying to look for a pattern or a thing to do, but I think it might be just like last time where. Uh oh. Yeah, you just have to go through until it does something.
Why is there a baby? Like, well, I should probably question why there are baby mummies staring at me, but... I'm curious if there's actually, like, any meaning to this game. Like, some lore and not just scary stuff. Hold out to the bitter end. Mom, wait. The greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short, and the longer nights merely provided this wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind, gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying to do her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerative illness robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Soon she recognized none of us and it became clear that she would need to be moved from the house, from her house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandfather, I felt nothing but anguish with her illness, at her illness. This day, to this day, I feel guilty at my, at my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightly visitor could, may do should I become aware of my mother's absence. Her presence being the one which I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of this thing's reach. I rushed home from school that day and immediately wrenched the bed sheets and the mattress from the lower bunk. Removing all of the slats, placing an old desk, a piece of an old desk, a piece of drawers, and some chairs which we kept in a cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. I told my father I was making an office, an office which he found adorable. But I would be damned if I give that thing a place to sleep one more night. As the darkness approached, I lay there knowing. My mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into her jewelry box and take a small family crucifix, which I had seen there before. While my father family were not very religious, at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand, Sleep eventually came as I drifted off to the dream. I hoped that I would awake in, in the morning without incidents. Unfortunately, the night was the most terrifying of all. Urban Explorer. Stacks of notebooks. A poster for a play. A bunch of school books. It says woof. The feeling that something in something's invading our privacy, even without ill will, is disturbing. You are good. Good. Bunch of school books. The clock has stopped.
and even if you don't know why they are here, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. As a tricep, yep, yep, I, I can say that word. An old picture of what seems to be a religious man and woman. Is this a bathtub? A bathtub in the middle of the classroom. The sounds of screens are awful. They are even worse when they are your own. A pile of mattresses, dirty and worn out. There's a piece of paper here. It reads, knock knock. Not just reading them out here. Okay, you gotta let me in. Okay. Oh, shit. Can't get back out. Big filing cabinet. Oh, hello. Wait. What the hell's this? Alright. I suppose it's not important. Fuck that. I, 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 that's not even scary. I just don't know what the fuck that was. There's nothing behind here. I'm just gonna wait here patiently. And screw through the cracks on the floor. It's an old machine of some sort. Okay. Just dive into hell. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? What?
Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. Alright then. I woke gradually. The room was dark once again. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually- Fucking goddammit. Even to this day, I shudder to think of it, for there was no noise. No rustling of sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless. Lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor, that I would welcome weaseling, hate-filled with thing which I had terrorized me night after night, was not on the bottom buck. It was in my bed. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I could not scream, I did not want to let it know I was awake. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. It was obscured only- Oh fucking goddammit. The weight of it pressed down on top of me. A sensation I will never forget. When I say that hours passed, I do not exaggerate. I lay there motionless in the darkness. It's every bit of scared as frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months, it would have been light by then. But the gasps of, gasps of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise. A sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I reached a breaking point. A moment where I could no more, where I could no where I could survive under this intimate the deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you thread a bear threadbare. A shell of nerves leave you only the slightest trace of you behind. I did get out of that bed. Then I remembered the crucifix. My hand still still got hold of my my eye. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I swell, I slowly moved my wrist around to find it. In a mind as best I could, the sound and vibration is caused, but it cannot be found. I had neither knocked it off the tump back, sorry, off the tump bunk or it had I could not even bear to think of it been taken from my own hand without the crucifix I lost any sense of hope even at such a young age I would be acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened of it I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there dormant past doing nothing I had to leave the room leave that room behind but how? Should I leap from the bed and hope that I make it to the door? Or if it's faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of the blanket, hoping not to not disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that I had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix began, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. That will be all for this episode. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen.